Now, Tim and Amanda, good morning to both of you. We know that lawmakers have been going back and forth on proposals for hundreds of days now. And when it comes to a budget, there are many different sections. But the one section that we're talking about this morning is public education. So we're going to walk over here and joining me right now is Ken DiPietro, who is superintendent of Plainfield Schools. Ken, good to be with you. Good to be with you. So now, one thing you were telling me earlier, this is not a new problem for your town. No, it, this is as early as May of this year. We started to realize the problem that it was going to, that we were going to face. And you told me earlier numbers regarding layoffs. How has this been affecting your town specifically? So right now we're in the stage of layoffs of anywhere from uh, 12 to 24 people before the middle of November. And by the middle of November, we will be into basically deconstructing our school system. Uh, there won't be enough money. And, and talk to me about the money in specific, uh, specifically. What will be cut in, in what order in your town? Okay, so in May when we learned of a $1.6 million cut because of the teacher pension, we took out uh, the Certified Nursing Association, uh, Certified Nursing Assistant Program at the high school, the technology for students, French in the middle school, we increased class size in fourth and fifth grade, and we lowered the te uh, paraeducator schedules by $150,000 just to save a million dollars because the taxpayers didn't want to absorb that. That was May. In August, we started doing more consolidations and we had to put freezes, hard freezes on every single cost because there would be a cash flow problem. We only got 2.5 out of $3.8 million on ECS in October, so you run out of money in December. So we virtually had to freeze everything. And now we're into layoffs where we're starting to basically take the, the few people that we can look at from the beginning and start thinking we are gonna have to lay you off. There is no money at the end of the year. But uh, as of November, we would not, we, have to, we would have to cut $2.3 million. Uh, you cannot do that in the middle of a year. What's next for you guys? So at this point, we are uh, looking at the fact that whenever you do one reduction, just one classroom teacher reduction, you have to inform everybody. So if a classroom is going to be consolidated, you need to move 18 children into three other classrooms. You need to inform 80 people that their children in their classrooms, instruction is going to be changed. And then when you do that, that teacher is going to replace, not lose their job, they're going to replace the least senior. So you're bumping uh, teachers, and that means you're informing. So our problem is really now we're in the process of communicating to the public that we're not disassembling our system at this point. We're hopeful that the legislators will get this done so that we can actually get back to the business of educating. But right now, we're just trying to tell the parents what is happening and what is not happening. We are trying to not disrupt instruction to the extent possible, but it's in process. And, and lastly, can legislators will be meeting inside this building later on today. What is your message, if they're watching right now, for your town and every single town here in this state? Uh, I believe they know this, but they have to understand that the crisis is already in place. If they don't act now and we don't get a budget solid so that we have a predictable budget, we know what we're doing, we will continue to disrupt instruction. We'll continue to stop programming that students need in order to, to be successful in the schools. We've made a lot of progress in Plainfield. We'd like to keep that progress growing, but if they don't settle the budget, we don't know a predictable budget, we virtually keep disassembling until they give us a number that we can work with. All right, Ken, thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Again, lawmakers will be meeting inside the state capitol behind me today at noon to try to figure out this whole budget crisis. Reporting live at the state capitol, Ben Goldman, Fox 61 News. Hey Amanda and Tim, good morning to you. Lawmakers, we know it, have been going back and forth for hundreds of days now trying to get this budget passed and agree on something. Well, now they are going even further to try to do that. And we know that there are different sectors and sections of a budget, but the one section that we're talking about specifically today is public education. So we're going to walk over here and joining me right now is Fran Rabinowitz, who is the executive director of the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents. Quite the title. You have been talking with superintendents from all over the state. What are you hearing? Well, I'm hearing that the longer this budget or lack of budget goes on, the, much, the more difficult it is for superintendents and their staff, and most especially the children of Connecticut. Um, there is so much uncertainty, and the executive order is, um, is devastating in many school districts. Um, teachers are being laid off. Children are being moved from one class to another. Reading teachers are being let go. Um, interventionists are going, so kids are not receiving the services that they need. Um, after school programs are gone, before school programs are gone. There's just general um, 
devastation across um, many, many school districts. Now, Fred, this is a new role that you're in. You've been superintendent yes. before. Now you run this association with all superintendents here in Connecticut. You've really dedicated your life to this. When you see a budget that still has not been passed and cuts so deep for these different towns, how does that affect you? I remember my days. I mean, it's only six months that I've been out of the superintendency. So I remember how difficult it is when you have a budget that may not be fortuitous for a given year. And we've had many of those. The difference is I was able in May to make plans for the following year with my staff and to keep those cuts as far away from children as possible. With this budget and um, lack of budget, there's so much uncertainty that I really do fear and know that the children of Connecticut are going to be deeply affected by it. Um, it is unbelievable to take a first grader, for example, who has finally come to school, bonded with their teacher, um, really immersed in teaching and learning, and all of a sudden that teacher's gone and the child who bonded is being put in another classroom. No one can tell me that that doesn't affect um, negatively affect teaching and learning for that child. And, and every child only has one chance at being a first grader or a second grader. And this is affecting that. And lastly, I want to ask you, if we have lawmakers that are watching us right now on television from home before they come here, what's your message to them? My message is, I know it's hard. I know your job is incredibly difficult. I've watched you make incredibly difficult decisions over the um, years in my profession. I would just ask that when you are sitting there, please um, try to come together today to work out a solution. And keep in mind that the children of Connecticut are being affected. So give us a budget and a budget that is equitable for all children. All right, Fran, thank you for your time this thank morning. You. I appreciate your perspective. Definitely interesting. Okay. Senate Republicans and Democrats will be meeting in this building behind me today at noon to try and figure all of this out. For now, reporting live at the state capitol, Ben Goldman, Fox 61 News. Now, Tim, that's exactly right. Good morning to both of you. Lawmakers have been going back and forth. We know this for hundreds of days now trying to get a budget passed or at least a grant a proposal. Well, there are different sectors of a budget. We talk about the different sections all the time this morning. We're talking about public education. We've talked to a superintendent in Plainfield and how that's affecting him. Also, we've talked to the head of superintendents in the association here in Connecticut. Now, a different perspective joining me right now is Patrice McCarthy from the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. Patrice, good to be with you. Good morning. So talk to me about your perspective dealing with elected officials in towns who are dealing with these cuts. School board members around the state have been working very hard since last spring to try and make sure that the students in their districts have a successful, positive educational experience. So they've tried to keep the drama and the lack of a budget as far away from the classroom as possible. However, given the fact that we still, at this point, don't have a budget in place, they're being forced to take very unfortunate actions. Increasing class sizes because of staff layoffs, eliminating after-school programs that support our students. The, th the structures they have put in place to support student achievement are now in the process of being dismantled. These elected officials, we both live in towns, we all live in towns with elected officials, they run on the promise of not affecting class sizes and all of these, these, these different promises that they no longer can keep. What are you hearing from them as you deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis? They're deeply frustrated and they're deeply concerned about the future of public education in Connecticut. Without a funding system that we can rely on for our public school students, we can't make the plans, they can't put plans in place at the local level that they know are needed to support their students. And, and one thing that we were talking about earlier a budget still has not been passed, so this is all speculation and it's having a serious effect on towns. It is. The uncertainty that has been going on for really the past six months is now reaching a critical point at the local level. We have communities that by charter are already working on their budgets for 2018-19 and the, not knowing what they will even be having for resources next month 
is having a very serious impact. All right, Patrice, thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate your perspective. Connecticut being the last state not to pass a state budget. Senate Democrats and Republicans will be meeting behind me today inside that building at noon to try and figure all of this out. For now, reporting live at the state capitol, Ben Goldman, Fox 61 News.